It's been about two weeks or so ago that I had the pleasure of using Fuji's latest lineup of lenses. I had the privilege to have them loaned to me directly from Fuji Malaysia. They were the Fuji 33mm f1.4 and also the lens I will be reviewing in this review, the brand new 18mm f1.4 by Fuji. Full disclosure, although the lens was loaned to me by Fuji, however, they didn't tell me what to say in this video. So I will be sharing with you guys what I really think about this lens and be rest assured that I'll definitely try to be as unbiased as I possibly can be. Also, as you guys who have been subscribed to this channel already would know, my reviews are not about charts and pixel peeping, as there are plenty of reviews out there that do a better job than me for that. Instead, my reviews are based on my personal perspectives and experiences using the lens, so if that does tickle your fancy, then I guess this review is definitely aimed towards you. Okay, so let's first look at the build quality of the Fuji 18mm f1.4. As you would expect from any Fujifilm products, the build quality is definitely really good and leaves little to be desired in terms of build quality. The focus ring and the aperture ring is nice, although I would have to say the copy I had with me had a super light aperture ring. I felt it was so easy to rotate the aperture ring and there was hardly any resistance. But I assume that this might just be an isolated case since it is a demo copy from Fuji. So I guess your luck will definitely vary from mine, but yeah, it's just worth noting, I guess. That being said, I have to admit, I do prefer manual aperture rings that feel just a tad more notchy as it gives me confidence and it really feels great and satisfying every time you do change your aperture value. Unfortunately, this lens didn't deliver that feeling for me, but that's fine. I guess as mentioned earlier, it could just be my copy that does that. So yeah, unfortunately. Also, another thing worth noting is that in this lens, when the lens is turned off, you do have this feeling like something is rattling inside the lens, but it is in fact the characteristic of this lens itself. So don't be worried about it too much. It has that kind of image stabilized lens kind of feeling where there's things that are moving, but once it's turned on, it's totally fine. You don't get any rattling or anything like that. So I just thought about letting you guys know about that in case you may be wondering why is my lens rattling inside? Okay, so let's Let's now go through the specs of this lens. This lens weighs around 370 grams. The lens is constructed using 15 elements in nine groups and it has nine rounded aperture blades too, just like the new 33 millimeters f1.4. By the way, if you'd like to watch that review, you can click on the link on the right hand side to watch it. Anyway, back to the lens. At its widest aperture, this lens opens up to f1.4 and it can be closed down all the way to f16. There is no image stabilization on this lens and as for the filter thread, it spots a 62 millimeter filter thread. As for the closest focusing distance, it can focus as close as 20 centimeters away from the subject. And I must say it has a slight macro capability with a close up magnification of around 0.15. In terms of usability and experience using this lens, I would say this lens really made me fall in love with it. I've always been a fan of the 24 millimeter focal length, which this lens is in a full frame sensor, because I find that that focal length is really versatile. You can shoot literally almost anything. You well, it makes a fantastic all round lens as a daily driver because it's not too wide like an ultra wide and not as tight as a 50 millimeter. So it's got that sweet spot in between. As there are often times that I do find in tighter spots, the 50 millimeter can just be a little too tight. I find that the 24 is just that sweet spot between being not too tight and not too wide. It makes a wonderful lens to shoot environmental portraits, landscapes, and even architectural stuff. However, it isn't perfect, so you do need to be careful when framing subjects in your shot, especially people, as you will get quite a lot of distortion if you place your subject to the side of the frame or even if you tilt the angle of the lens while shooting a subject from below or from above. But use well, you can really take advantage of that distortion to your advantage, I guess. So what do I think about the image quality that this lens produces? Well, this lens is really super sharp for what it is. I have no complaints at all. Also, in terms of chromatic aberrations, it is really well controlled. In terms of autofocus speed, both in video and photo, it was very impressive with its linear motors. However, I did notice that there was a slight printer kind of noise that was coming from it, but I don't know again. It could be in my copy, but it was a very faint noise. So you definitely got to be mindful about that if you are doing sound recording on your camera itself. But if it's off your camera, I don't think it's going to be audible at all. Performance is also really good in low light because of that f1.4 aperture. And in terms of bokeh, this lens definitely has plenty. It's really nice and creamy and you get good background separation, especially if you get close to the subjects. 
Anyway, I hope you guys don't mind me indulging just a little. Here are a few more sample shots that I took. As always, I always like doing street shoots down in Kuala Lumpur in the older side of the city because I always find that part of the city so much more interesting. Right then, so what's my conclusion after using this lens for a few weeks now? What do I think about it? And who do I think should really get this lens? For me, I think this lens makes a great companion to anyone wanting to have an all-round daily driver that can do almost everything really well. Use well, you can really get stunning portraits with it. And what's best is the fact that you can get more of the environment in compared to a 50 millimeter shooting up close. If money was no object, I seriously wouldn't think twice to get this lens. Alas, the only real caveat about this lens, in my opinion, I think has to be its price tag. It is definitely not a cheap lens at all by any stretch of the imagination. At $999, which is around $200 more than the 33 f1.4, I have to admit, I am more tempted to pick the 33 millimeters instead of this one, simply because it's just more affordable. And also, as I already do have a 24 1.4 on my Canon system, so yeah. Right, so that's it then. I hope you did find this short review helpful and useful and if you did please don't forget to give me a like share and subscribe to my channel also if you do feel like supporting this channel by making a small contribution i have left a link to my buy me a coffee in the description down below also do check out all the links of the gears that i use to make these sort of videos in the description down below and yeah i guess that's it thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video peace